Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're back on the R300. What we have here is the early version and it looks like it's got a very differently wired up power supply. And so what I want to dive into is seeing what the differences are between this early version and the later version that we already corrected the power supply on and see what it's going to take to get this operating within the specs of the tubes. And I do feel like the 274B tubes are the ones that are really being problematic. The owner of this amp put some new old stock 5E4Gs in the amp and he really hasn't had any problems but he still wants me to upgrade the power supply to what I know is going to be within the specs of the rectifier tubes and it's going to have a long life. This guy has invested a lot of money in this one. He put some of those uh, $1,500 a pair Western Electric tubes in it. So we want to make sure that you know everything's operating within what they can deal with. I'd actually rather torture the rectifier tubes if we had to than hurting those 300B tubes. The other thing though, I know a 5AR4 is going to bring up the voltage slower and it's going to let the 300B tube heaters get a head start before the B plus hits them which is definitely good for their long life and so let's dive into this thing and see what the differences are and come up with a plan for fixing the power supply so we're going to get in here and look at this early version of the r300 and i've seen them several variations i've seen one where this board looks very similar but has an extra capacitor up here in the front I've seen them where they have one diode in the delay board. I've seen them where they have two diodes in the delay board. So it seems like there's a whole lot of variations, but in my opinion, there's two major revisions. Originally on one forum, we were trying to label them like A, B, and C. And I think the simpler thing is there's an early and a late version. And this is the late version, which can be recognized by the size of this capacitor right here. The late version has a 100 UF cap, and it'll also have coil written here. And then the choke is connected from this point to that point. And we could get tripped up on trying to label them based on, well, it's got one diode or it's got two diodes or it has these resistors here or it doesn't all of that really isn't that important what really would differentiate the two versions is this capacitor here and the fact that the choke is connected to this power board and then we have this earlier version which has this big cap whether it has the extra cap or not and the choke is not wired to the board itself, but is wired before the power comes to the board. So this modification will work with any versions that have this 220 UF cap, whether or not they have the extra cap in the front, because we're not messing with any of this other part of the power supply. We're just modifying from the output of the rectifier tube well, it'll be this pin, comes across the diode to here, and I'll go over all that in a minute, from the rectifier tube to this point, and then to the output transformer. So, I've got all the wire ties, which was necessary to actually see where these wires are going, and I went ahead and just took them all out of the way, so we get kind of free wiring to move things around and look at stuff. So if we follow the voltage out of the transformer, which is these two wires, it comes straight up to the plate that is tied together on both these tubes to each leg of the high voltage AC. So one side of the AC is going here, the other side is going over to this tube. They tie the plates together. So 
although these rectifier tubes have two diodes, they're wired in parallel. So each tube is acting like a single diode in this full wave rectifier circuit. This is the total output of both rectifier tubes is on this pin right here. And then the first cap that the rectifier tubes is this giant 330 UF cap, which is easily five times, if not ten times, the value that these rectifier tubes can handle, especially those 274Bs. And it's no wonder they were arcing out and blowing fuses and, you know, just tearing up rectifier tubes because this is super rough on a rectifier tube to have this much capacitance straight off of the rectifier tube. On the later version, they did put a 10 ohm resistor in this wire here, but I'm not going to concern myself with that. I don't think that's worth Putting in here 10 ohms, this isn't going to make a world of difference in how these rectifier tubes perform. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change up a little bit of wiring on the bottom of the rectifier tubes. And we're going to mirror what was done on the latest version. Which means we're going to remove this wire, both ends of it. We're going to leave a diode connected from here to this point. And I'm probably going to go ahead and replace both of these with the same brand and kind just so they're, you know, like a matched pair. Going to run a diode from pin 8 over here to pin 3. Same thing from pin 8 to pin 3. Then we're going to run this wire from pin 3 over to pin 3. Then both of the outputs of the rectifier two on the other side of the individual diodes is connected together. So this over here will be the output of the combination of both tube rectifiers. This will be our high voltage DC. We're going to unhook this wire that comes over here to this 330 UF choke. Let me I think I can zoom in here now. And then we're going to unhook this wire here that comes from the output to this 330 UF choke. We're going to install this 33 UF 500 volt capacitor. The negative side is going to go to the ground on this side of the big cap. And it's going to go right over there to that pin 3, just like that. It's going to go across there. And then put a little Contact cement and put a wire tie around it and hold it to this capacitor. So it'll be mounted just like that. And then we're going to take this choke lead and we're going to connect it to pin 3. So the voltage off pin 3 is then going to go to the choke. And then the other side of the choke will continue on up here to this terminal right here on this board and on the underside and in this circuit board this 220 UF cap is then going to be the second cap in the capacitor choke capacitor filtering and then these other capacitors are going to further filter the DC before it goes through these wires here up to the front end of the amp you know, the driver tubes. So the last little piece we're going to have to do here is I want to disconnect this wire that goes to the high voltage of the output transformer and then also disconnect it on the other side back here. So we're going to remove the wire that goes from here up to this point on the board. Okay, we're going to install a three terminal tag strip right across here. And I can, you know, I can pull these wires back like this. So there's plenty of room here to put a tag strip right here. We're going to run a wire from this point on this board, which is the output of this choke, that also has this capacitor going from this point to ground. We're going to run a wire from here to this tag strip. Then we're going to put a 50 ohm resistor 
from one end of the three terminal tag strip to the other. So we're going to be putting this 50 ohm dropping resistor up here on this tag strip. Then this is the crossover wire that goes between the two output transformers. And it's going to be connected to the other side of that 50 ohm resistor. And then the final connection we're going to make is we're going to take this wire that used to go up here to the rectifier tube and it's going to connect to that point on the tag strip. So this 330 UF cap is going to be the filter storage cap for the two output transformers in the 300B tube. Now this cap will no longer be used as part of the filtering for the front end tubes. But they've got these caps over here to deal with that. And to me, it makes sense to separate out the DC voltage that's going to the 300B tubes from the driver tubes. And it'll help isolate those signals from each other. And still use this nice big cap that's in here, but just use it for the 300B tubes. The other thing this allows is we can fine tune this resistor on this tag strip from 50 ohms to 100 ohms or whatever we need to use to get the voltage on the 300B tubes within spec using these 5AR4 rectifier tubes without impacting the voltage going to the front end of the amp. The last thing I wanted to point out some of you may be going, well, mine's got a little film cap that goes across this capacitor. Well, this one did too, and I just took it out for the time being to show you, you know, what that looks like. It's easier to see these wires and stuff with that little film cap missing. And I actually may try listening to the amp with and without that extra film cap across here and see which one sounds better. I know a lot of people just automatically put film caps across big electrolytic caps thinking it's going to improve the sound but in my experience sometimes that can negatively impact the sound the other thing i'm going to do before i change anything is i'm going to put the wilsonton 300 b tubes back in this amp and without you know changing any of this rectifier tube or power supply wiring i want to power the amp up i want to check all the voltages on the different plates and cathodes, especially on the driver tubes, but also on the 300B tubes, and see where we're at with it stock, and then compare that after we modify it, because we don't want to, you know, upset the balance too much. And so, hopefully, we can come up with a this solution that will keep the voltages the same, or very similar, but make the rectifier tubes live. So I know that was a lot of information. What I may end up doing on the next video segment is, you know, kind of break this up and then show you, you know, piece by piece zoomed in what each of them looks like modified. And I will also put a schematic up in the next video that shows you everything that was done and with the changes that were made like the before and after so that it'll help you understand how to wire this thing up. And I think this is a great place to wrap up this video. Well, I was pretty sure it wasn't gonna be hard to come up with a solution for the power supply on this version. And I've seen pictures and I think there's even a third version out there. And I'm probably not going to be able to get a copy of every possible version that they put out there of this amp. So hopefully the solution that we're going to use on this amp will also be able to work on those other versions or people will be able to figure out the small differences and be able to get their amp working like it should. I'm also excited to look into this driver tube thing that we saw on the other amp. And I'm probably going to use the tubes in it, put them in this amp, move them around and see if we have the same results or different results and what's going on there. I'm hoping that it's something like, you know, the tubes biased a little on the cold side or it's right on the knee of the curve. And if we just change the bias of 
one of these tubes that's going to resolve that issue. But won't know till I get in there. And I think it's got something to do with the way these 6S and 7s are working. But anyway, we'll get into that later. Hopefully I'm going to have both of these figured out and back to their owners by the end of the month. That's my plan. So hope you're enjoying this content. Thanks for watching my videos. Appreciate you Patreon supporters. And I really appreciate folks that have sent their imps to me to use on the channel and show y'all the problems and how to fix them on some of these amps to come up with something that is a really nice reliable product. So anyway, until the next video, have a nice day.